Hello. In this video, I will introduce the new improved version 3.5 of our AD9910 based DDS shield for Arduino. We've implemented numerous significant updates that make the device even more user friendly and functional. Here are the key enhancements. Menu navigation has been upgraded. Buttons have been replaced with an encoder for easier control. A physical button has been added to toggle the RF output on and off. LED indicators have been introduced for each SMA connector, along with a separate indicator for PLL lock status. Support for a larger 1.54 inch display for users with impaired vision. The 0.96 inch display remains available. A software controlled RF switcher has been added to select clock sources eliminating the need to manually resolder capacitors. Two new SMA outputs have been added. Targi out for oscilloscope synchronization in S-curve mode and Drover to indicate when the sweep function completes. A bi-directional level shifter has been added to the shield, allowing not only data writing to the AD9910, but also reading it back. This enables the use of the read, modify, write concept. Two new modes have been added to the firmware, local oscillator and S-curve, both useful for tuning radio receivers. The shield now monitors the power supply voltage and displays a warning, disabling the AD9910 if the input voltage is outside acceptable limits. Circuit design optimizations have significantly reduced phase noise compared to version two. Now, Let's discuss each innovation in more detail. In the old version, three buttons were used for control and navigation through the menu, while in the new version, they have been replaced with a convenient encoder that allows for quick adjustments of parameters across a wide range of values. Another modification was the addition of a dedicated button for quickly enabling or disabling the signal on the RF output. The current output status is displayed in two locations, on the OLED display and by an LED located above the RF out SMA connector. The illuminated LED indicates that the output is active. LEDs have also been added next to the other SMA connectors. An illuminated LED indicates the active state of the corresponding SMA connector. The LED above the RF CLK in connector lights up when one of the external clock sources is selected in the clock settings, signaling that an external generator should be connected to this input. The PLL lock LED lights up when the internal PLL module is active and the frequency lock has been successfully achieved. This is a sign that the clock settings are correctly configured. This LED can also be useful when experimenting with overclocking the DDS core. Lastly, the LED above the TRG out connector indicates that this output is active and pulses are being sent for synchronization with an oscilloscope. We have adapted the new board to support larger OLED screens, 1.54 inches. For comparison, this is how the screen for DDS version two looked. We have also maintained compatibility with the older, smaller 0.96 inch displays. The larger screen significantly simplifies working with the DDS for people with impaired vision. Now, when switching the clock source, there is no longer a need to resolder capacitors as was required in version two. Thanks to the RF switch, you can instantly switch between the built-in TCXO and an external clock source. For example, let's connect an external OKXO from Wenzel with a frequency of 50 megahertz. As you can see, the DDS output frequency exactly matches the one set in the settings. Now let's go into the clock settings and select the external TCXO slash OCXO as the source. In this mode, the built-in PLL will be activated. Currently, the DDS output frequency no longer matches the set frequency because the TCXO on the board operates at 40 megahertz. 
while we switch the DDS to an external generator operating at 50 MHz. To correct this discrepancy, we need to properly set the external source frequency and save the settings. Now everything is correct, and the DDS output frequency once again matches the one set in the settings. To clock the DDS directly, meaning with the internal PLL disabled, there is also no need to resolder any components. This can be done through the settings menu. We will demonstrate the operation of this mode using an external low noise generator, the RCLN 1000, with an output frequency of one gigahertz. The new version has introduced a local oscillator mode. This mode will be particularly appreciated by HAM radio enthusiasts, as the DDS is an ideal solution for use as a local oscillator in super heterodyne radio receivers due to its very low phase noise and high frequency stability. A separate operating mode was created to eliminate the need to recalculate the output frequency each time. Instead, you can simply set the intermediate frequency and the tuning step. In the settings, you can choose to either add or subtract the intermediate frequency from the carrier frequency. Another new mode that ham radio enthusiasts will appreciate is the S-curve mode. This mode is essential for optimal tuning of a quadrature coil or for testing a ceramic discriminator in an FM detector. To use this mode, you need to connect the RF output to the receiver input through a 70 decibel attenuator. Then, connect the receiver output to the first channel of the oscilloscope. It is recommended to capture the signal before the output filter. Additionally, connect the TRG output to the second channel of the oscilloscope and set the trigger to capture the rising edge on this channel. An interesting feature of this mode is that for easier interpretation of the oscilloscope readings, one millisecond on the timescale corresponds to a one kilohertz detuning. This makes it very easy to measure frequency deviation. Another new feature is the protection against overvoltage or undervoltage. If the supply voltage deviates from the recommended value of 7.5 volts, the protection is triggered, disconnecting the AD9910 and displaying a warning message on the screen. The disconnection will occur if the supply voltage drops below 4 volts or exceeds 8 volts. This measure is designed to protect the shield from damage when powered by an unsuitable power supply. One of the most interesting features in this version is the support for remote commands via the serial port, including USB. Any terminal program that supports data transfer to a serial port can be used to send commands. We will be using the terminal built into the Arduino IDE. It's important to set the baud rate to 115,200 baud. To view the full list of supported commands, you can send the H character. Now let's demonstrate how to control the DDS parameters in practice. We will change both the frequency and output power simultaneously. As you can see, the DDS is currently outputting a signal with a frequency of 145 MHz and a power level of 0 dBm. Now, let's modify the output signal parameters. We'll enter the command F to set the frequency and specify a new frequency, for example, 100 megahertz, and at the same time, lower the power to negative 20 decibels. We'll use the semicolon symbol to separate the commands, enter P, and set the value to negative 20. We'll send this command by pressing enter. The specified signal parameters will immediately be displayed on the DDS screen, and the output signal will automatically adjust according to them. Thank you for watching.